Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Um, please excuse my nasal voice, I'm still fighting a bit of a cold so I hope it won't bother you as much. But today we are going to paint finally after I haven't touched a huge canvas for literally years on a huge canvas, which is great, especially after that forever creative blog of mine. To be honest, getting started was still quite overwhelming, but I finished it and I'm also quite content. Still lifes aren't in my comfort zone, as you probably already know if you watched my videos for quite some time. But in the past few months, I really enjoyed experimenting with a more graphic and illustrative style with neon details and yeah, I don't know where it's going to go, but it's fun and that's also why I started by doing this neon pink underpainting, which was a pain in the ass, to be honest, because until this point I wasn't able to find a neon pink paint of good quality. And what made working with this particular paint not very enjoyable was the fact that the color is not very opaque, so I had to paint over it several times, but it's very watery and <laughs> it got reactivated by itself when I painted over it. And I moved the pigments around, so that meant in some spots you were able to see the canvas again, so not very pleasant. But luckily the underpainting doesn't have to be perfect. But the cool thing though is when I paint over this neon pink underpainting with my acrylic white by another brand, the acrylic white gets cracks when it dries. So it reveals the underpainting again in some spots, which is pretty cool because the whole point of me doing this very fluorescent underpainting is because I want it to be seen in some spots. So that's a good thing. When I started this painting, I had a very inconcrete vision what I wanted to do, but I felt very inspired to work on that. And the final painting isn't at all what I envisioned before, but I also haven't been able to paint this exact vision of mine because as I said, it wasn't very concrete. So in the beginning, it, it made it even more overwhelming to start because I didn't know how I want to start and what exactly I want to do, so that's not very ideal. And that's also why I first started off by painting some of um, the flowers freehand, but I haven't been very content with that, and so I um, admitted to myself that it would be probably easier to do a preliminary drawing, as always. and that's when my painting became very concrete and that's great and I think um, this painting leans on a painting I did in my latest video that was way smaller but it was the first flower vase and um, also still life I've done so far I think so um, this is um, the upgraded version I would say when it came to the flower bouquet I decided to paint the leaves first because they are predominantly and let me tell you painting the green on the neon pink made my eyes flickering all the time <laughs> Here we have a um, longer clip of me painting in real time, so you get more of a feeling how long this actually takes. I don't know how long this painting took me in total, but I painted for a few days. Thank you. 
On this particular day, I painted way into the night because you probably know this, but when you are heading to the finish line and know you are almost done, it's oftentimes very hard to stop. So <laughs> yeah, I couldn't stop myself and finished the background so that on the day after, I only had to do some touch-ups and I also spontaneously wanted to add a few highlights here and there. And after that, the painting has been finished. So I don't know if that counts as a mini graphic novel or if it's kind of a comic illustration. But I really, really like how it turned out. I felt very inspired when I had the initial idea for this illustration. And when I practiced drawing teddies beforehand, because for some reason I find it particularly hard to draw teddies. <laughs> Um, I really got lost creating an extensive Pinterest board with photos of teddies, which got weirder and uglier by picture, but I, I love them. I really love them. So this is the Pinterest board in question, and this is the page I've been practicing on. That's a very spontaneous little check-in because today I woke up and decided that today is the day I'm opening up an additional Etsy shop and I'm saying additional because I already have my own website with my own online store um, but I wanted to have an additional Etsy shop to hopefully have a little bit more reach because now most of the people that find my website are people that know me and of course it's way easier to be found on Etsy 
because Etsy is doing a lot of the marketing for you and with your own shop website it's different of course so um, I figured that it would be very reasonable to do both and prints are very easy to handle on both websites because I can reproduce prints as many times as I want and there will be no problem with the inventory because I will have a bunch of prints and I will put one half of them on my Etsy and the other one on my shop website. And right now I'm having a little bit of a break and will continue to upload new products um, but it's already pretty much in the evening already and I'm pretty exhausted to be honest. It's a lot of work to do that. Luckily I already have all of the product photos, all of the product texts more or less so that now I don't have as much work as before with my shop and if you want to see the whole process of how I opened up my online shop and my online portfolio in the first place I will link it again for you there is this whole entire transparent process of it and I learned everything along the way so maybe this is going to be helpful for you and also a short reminder if you are thinking about something you've been dreaming of for quite some time i really want to encourage you to pursue that even if it's just small steps but i can ensure you it's very fulfilling in some ways even if it's very time consuming and exhausting at times and a lot of work but i noticed that no matter how much effort i had to put in this project it's the only thing that hasn't burnt me out along the way ever <laughs> so that says something and shows how much I burned for it and I'm also trying to not be discouraged or something when it's going very slow I mean it's not that I have lots and lots of orders every day in my shop absolutely not so it's baby steps and that's fine If you've seen my latest video, you saw me designing these two new postcards and I'm very content with how they turned out. They are also available in my shop. And a quick side note, up until this point, I haven't been able to take orders from outside of Germany, but with Etsy, this changed. Because via Etsy, it's way easier to handle the different shipping situations. So if you are living outside of Germany and wish to place an order, you can now do it via Etsy. But if you are living in Germany and wish to place an order, you can of course do it via my initial shop website, which is also pretty welcome because Etsy takes hefty fees. But uh, yeah, of course, it's still up to you. Uh, you will find both of my shops in my description box, but also linked everywhere else. Speaking of the shop, I also wanted to show you my process of packing your orders because I'm sure I've mentioned it before, but sometimes it's wild to me that people want to buy the stuff I made with my own hands, with actual money. Not, not that I think they are not good enough, but I think you get what I want to say. It's wild sometimes, but I really can't describe how thankful I am for every support because doing these things is what fulfills me and seeing that people really like what I'm doing and want to support that and want to see what I created in their own home every day is so beautiful to me. So I really want the person who receives my package to have a special unpacking moment. I really like to personalize the package and make it really pretty and yeah. <laughs>
Recently, my best friend of 20 years, Sarah, visited me for one entire week here in Berlin and we spent the most beautiful time together. We did so many cool things. We saw a lot of the city and yeah, essentially spent a lot of quality time together. And one of the most beautiful things about our friendship is that no matter how far apart we are and no matter what happens, nothing can change our special bond and both of us really know that very deeply and really trust in that. And yeah, I'm, I see myself as very lucky and love her so much. <laughs> Um, yeah, so here are a few snippets of our time together. And that's also going to be it for today. So thank you so much if you're still here and chose to spend your time with me. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, I hope to see you in my next one. Goodbye.